Hi, welcome back. I'm Ms. Mogelson, and thank you for coming back for our second Making Meaning lesson this week. In our last lesson, we read An Angel for Solomon Singer, and we wondered and asked questions while we were reading. Then we reread the book to see if some of our questions and wonderings were explained. Today, we're going to add that strategy to the chart you began with Ms. Keller. You've already added visualizing, using the author's clues to picture in your mind. And today we're adding wondering and questioning. Today we are going to practice asking questions about another story. Like in our last lesson, I'll be stopping a few times for you to think about what you are wondering. So if you have someone who is around who can watch the video with you, you can uh, share your wonderings with them. Otherwise, you can just make sure that you're doing your thinking on your own. Today, we are going to read a book called The Name Jar by Yan Suk Choi and published by Dragonfly Publishing. In this book, you'll read about a young girl named Yoon Hae who moves to the United States from Korea. Thinking about the title and looking at the cover, what do you wonder? about this book. Some kids who have uh, looked at the cover and had their own wonderings have wondered questions like, why is that girl putting papers in that jar? And I wonder if those names, if those are names on those pieces of paper. You can give me a same if you had some of the same wonderings as you were thinking about the cover. Again, as I am reading, you can, we'll be stopping three times and you can ask uh, your questions or share your wonderings with someone or just make sure that you're doing that thinking in your head. The Name Jar by Yan Suk Choi. Through the school bus window, Yoon Hae looked out at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day, and she was both nervous and excited. She fingered the little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Yoon Hae's tears and handed her an ink pad and small red satin pouch and a pouch is a small cloth bag. Her grandmother had wiped away Yoon Hae's tears and handed her an ink pad and small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name, Yoon Hae had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. As she ran her fingers along the grooves and ridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Yoon Hae, surprising her. Yoon Hae looked up as more kids leaned over. Uh, no, it's mine, Yoon Hae answered, quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Yoon Hae, said Yoon Hae. Une, the girl asked, scrunching up her face. Ooh, ooh, une, some children chanted. No, no, Yunhei corrected. It's spelled U-N-H-E-I. It's pronounced Yunhei. And pronounced means to say something correctly. It's pronounced Yunhei. Oh, it's you hey, the boy said, like you, hey, what about hey, you? Just then the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened. Yoon Hae hurried to get off. You hey, bye bye, the girls answered, the uh, kids uh, yelled as she left. Yoon Hae felt herself blush. I'd like you to think about what's happened so far. And what are you wondering about this part of the story? Some readers have wondered questions like, are the kids 
in you and Hay's class going to be mean too? And I wonder if anyone will say her name right. You can give me a same if one or maybe both of these wonderings were the same as what you've been wondering. You, hey, bye, bye, the kids yelled as she left. Yoon Hei felt herself blush. Yoon Hei stood inside the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms, but her face still felt red. Aren't you going in? Asked a curly haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? He asked cheerfully. Yoon Hei nodded, and before she could walk away, away the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Kokotos, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Kokotos thanked him and greeted Yoon Hei. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Yoon Hei smiled broadly, and to smile broadly means that you have a big smile. Yoon Hae smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Yoon Hae pictured the kids on the bus. Um, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Kokoktos showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, a boy replied. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Yoon Hae kept thinking about her name. How was school, Yoon Hae? Her mother asked her when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Yoon Hae simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch at a by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you're learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show you're a good Korean. I will, replied Yoon Hae, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Yoon Hae is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Yoon Hae complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Yoon Hae, her mother said. That's a good thing. Yoon Hae just wrinkled her nose. Later that day, Yoon Hae and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. They passed Fadil's Falafel, Tony's Pizza, and Dot's Deli. A big graffiti-painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to Kim's Market. The sign was both in English and Korean. Her mother picked up a cabbage to make kimchi, Korean-style spicy pickled cabbage, and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, Yoon Hae's favorite, for soup. It made Yoon Hae smile. Just because we've moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we stop eating Korean food. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Yoon Hae. Helping your mother with the shopping, he asked. Yoon Hae nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said. And what's your name? Yoon Hae, she answered. Ah, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't that mean grace? And grace means that you can move in a smooth or beautiful way. And it can also mean that you act in a kind or a thoughtful way. Doesn't that mean grace? Yoon Hae nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Yoon Hae. That evening, 
Yoon Hae stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name's Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried as she began to brush her teeth. Ha he, my name is Susie, she said to the mirror with a mouthful of toothpaste. The next morning, when Yoon Hae arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Yoon Hae took one out and read it. Daisy, that's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want, said Cindy, who sat next to her. Yoon Hae took out the rest of the paper. Tamala, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was really smart and brave. Yunhei nodded and unfolded another piece. Wednesday? Yeah, you came here on a Wednesday, said Ralph. <laughs> Thank you for your help. A smile spread over Yunhei's face. Ralph quickly said, we'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like or pick them all and you'll have the longest name in history. What questions do you have? Or what are you wondering at this point? Some questions and wonderings that some people have had when they've read this part of the story are, why did the kids in her class make a name jar? Will Yoon Hae pick a new name from the name jar? I wonder if Yoon Hae is going to be friends with the kids in her class. You could pick them all and have the longest name in history. At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day. Yoon Hae looked out the window and saw it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought, but a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. Yoon Hae turned around to see the curly haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said, and you, don't you have any name? Yoon Hae thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and she took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as my signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Want to try it? She offered the stamp to Joey and he carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Yoon Hae said. And then the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day, the jar got fuller and fuller with more names, and Yu Hei read them all. She found a few names she liked, Miranda, Stella, Avery. They sounded interesting. I hope you'll choose the name I put in, Marco told her at snack time. I've put in three more, said Ralph, Madison, Park, and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. Everyone thought about this. When Yoon Hae got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. It said, to my Yoon Hae, I hope you are enjoying your new school and friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here the moon is up, but there the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are, and no matter how different America is from Korea, you'll always be my Yoon Hae, your grandma forever. 
Yunhei took out her wooden stamp and filled a paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, Yunhei walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hi, Yunhei. Hello, Mr. Kim, Yunhei replied. She felt as if she was back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer, turning around. It was Joey. Your name is Unhe, he said with his eyes open wide. Yunhei looked quickly at Mr. Kim and then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced Yunhei. And it means grace, added Mr. Kim. Yunhei. Joey said slowly, and this time perfectly. It made Yunhei smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday, Yunhei, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. Now I'd like you to think about what are you wondering or what questions do you have after hearing this part of the story? Some readers have had the questions, will Yoon Hae decide to keep her Korean name? And what is Mr. Kim getting ready for Joey? If you had one of these wonderings or something similar, go ahead and give me a singing signal. He left before she could ask why he was at the store. On Monday, Yoon Hae came to class early to look at the names one last time, but the jar wasn't on her desk. Instead, it, there was just a single piece of paper, paper with a name on it. Yoon Hae slipped it in her pocket. Where's your name jar? Ralph asked as soon as he saw it was gone. I don't know, Yoon Hae said. It wasn't on Mr. Kokokto's desk or on any other desk, and it wasn't on the counters of any of the shelves. Soon the other children arrived and they helped look. Soon Mr. Kokoktos came in and Ralph shouted at him, the name jar is gone. The jar with all the names in it. Gone, Mr. Kokoktos replied with a look of concern. And a look of concern means you're looking at someone in a worried way. With a look of concern, he asked Yunhei, did you get a chance to read all the names? Yunhei nodded. She took a deep breath. I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Yunhei wrote her name in both English and Korean on the chalkboard. I liked the beautiful names and the funny names you thought of for me, she said, told the class, but I realized I liked my name best, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Yunhei means grace. Grace, Grace, in high, shouted Ralph. Everyone tried saying it. Yin ha yi, an yi, an he. Yun Hei said her name again slowly and clearly. Soon the kids began to say it better. Even Mr. Kokoktos, they applauded. They applauded Yun Hei's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Yun Hei. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kokoktos reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Yun Hei heard her new friends say goodbye. Bye, Yun Hei. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Yun Hei. Yun Hei said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Yun Hei, Yun Hei, come downstairs, Mother called up to Yun Hei. Your friend is here. Yun Hei rushed down to see who she meant. There stood Joey, and in his arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? asked Yun Hei breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Um, well, I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name, and you did. He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? He asked. Thank you, I'll keep them as a souvenir. 
And a souvenir is a gift or an object or something that you uh, keep to remind you about a person or something that has happened. I'll keep them as a souvenir. Yunhei said happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us, names with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Yoon-hae. I've already got a Korean nickname, said Joey. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. Carefully, he pulled a small silver pouch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with beautiful Korean characters carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name. Chin Koo, read Yoon Hae, that means friend. And Chin Koo smiled back. In our next lesson, we're going to reread the name jar and see how some of our questions and wonderings are explained. Right now, though, I'd like you to think about the decision that Yoon Hae made to keep her Korean name. Why do you think that Yoon Hae decided to keep her Korean name, even though it was hard for the other kids to say, and even though her friends gave her lots of other ideas of American names she could choose? What would you have done in her place? If you have someone watching this with you, please tell them you're thinking. If you're watching by yourself, please answer these questions to yourself and practice being an active reader. Now it's time for IDR. Please remember that as second and third graders, you should be reading at least 20 to 25 minutes every day. Remember the books that you should be reading for IDR are books where, that are just right books. Those books where you don't need to problem solve more than two or three words and where you're able to tell yourself and remember the parts um, and what has happened on each page. Today, as you are reading, I want you to practice our strategy of wondering. When you are wondering, your brain is active because you're thinking about what you're curious about and you're also reading to see if those wonderings are explained. I want to model with my IDR book, Dragons in a Bag. The book is by Zeta Elliott and it's published by Yearling Publishers. I am at a really exciting part right now. Ma has just sent Jax back forward in time after they've been having this really scary adventure uh, back at the time of dinosaurs. She sent him back and this is the part I just read. Then I looked at the dirt path leading into the woods and I remember that I left Ma behind in the jungle. My eyes began to fill with tears again, but I quickly blinked them away. I'm Ma's helper and I have to find a way to bring her home, but I can't do it on my own. Who will help me? I pick up Ma's purse and close the guardhouse door behind me. There's a lot that I'm wondering just from this little part right here. I notice that I'm wondering, how is Jackson going to help Ma get back? Is he going to help Ma get back? And he said that he wanted to see if someone could help him with this problem. And I'm wondering who is available that can help him bring Ma back from the dinosaur times. As you are reading today, I'd like you to think about how you can record your wonderings in your packet. If you don't have a packet to record your wonderings in today, you can still use a piece of paper. But whether you're writing them down or just thinking them in your mind, please make sure you're being an active reader by noticing what you wonder and by noticing what questions you have. I'm looking forward to seeing you at our next lesson and happy reading.